a very good morning to all the participants and hearty welcome to this uh, ultra crash. So I'll be concentrating on the exam oriented way only. And uh, because the time is a major constraint, we have only uh, very few sessions to cover this international banking and um, your treasury management. So uh, distraction in between um, may lose the continuity. So I request all the participants, you have, a, whenever, whenever you have any doubt during the course of the uh, session, you just note down. At the end, I'll give you five minutes or 10 minutes. That time you can clear your doubts. So with the request, and all, I request all of you to mute your mic because a lot of disturbance I may get in between from the surroundings. So please mute your mic. I'll straight away go to the topic and let me share screen. So today in the morning session, I'll be starting with international banking. And in international banking, this is a more, one of the tough module in BFM, but it's not tough. It is because something is new to you, you may feel that it is tough. It is not at all tough at all. So um, let me take that. Uh, this the um, basics okay see uh, the morning session i will i will uh, cover the basics of foreign exchange and um, if time permits in the morning session two hours we'll uh, touch few you know, numericals also but i don't think there will be much time on that so the basics uh, i'll be going in a uh, little fast way because uh, it, it, the basic concepts only and by reading also you will be able to uh, grasp the uh, things so first of all, first is what is uh, foreign exchange? Foreign exchange, you can uh, attach two definitions to foreign exchange. One is, uh, you can say it is the process of converting one currency to another currency. Then it comes, what is one currency? See, every nation uh, in the globe is having a particular currency and that is uh, treated as the legal tender of that nation. For example, India, Indian rupee is the legal tender. That means any person, who can transact with Indian rupee in India. That is the legal, legally approved uh, currency. Now, uh, one minute, let, let me. It is the uh, legal tender. Uh, um, so uh, for US, the legal tender is US dollar. And for say uh, Great Britain or UK, it is uh, GBP, Great Britain pound. For our European Union nations, it is Euro. Like that, every nation has got a particular currency and that is the currency with which they can transact within that country. But now because of the globalization and the, and the impact of uh, say um, faster uh, telecom uh, communication methods and other things, now the entire globe is treated as one, one location. Therefore, a, any person who is sitting in India can have a transaction or can converse or can communicate with any other person in sitting any other in the world, maybe in Ethiopia, maybe in Egypt, maybe in Italy, or maybe in US, any country, because of the vast development taking place in telecommunication, it is very easy. But the only thing is you should have an internet connection. Therefore, uh, now the foreign exchange is giving more importance. You cannot confine to one country. See, suppose we take the case of India, which is a developing nation, and we cannot have, see, the resources which we have, we produce. Some of the resources may be excess and we may have to sell, dispose it off to other nations. Similarly, we may require some products from other countries. For example, a simple example, petroleum products. See, we, we are not sufficient with petroleum product which is generated in India. So what we do, we import it from other nations. Similarly, the latest technologies, equipments, machineries. So these are, all, and even manpower, we import from other nations to have a, in the, to develop our country. Similar is the case with other nations also. Therefore, the, uh, the exchange from one currency to an, another currency is uh, giving more importance in these days, means for the past 20, 25, 30 years. Therefore, uh, conversion of one currency to another currency is foreign exchange. Again, the second definition you can def uh, give is, uh, it is uh, any, any instrument, it can be a bill of exchange, or it can be a deposit receipt, or it can be a draft, or it's a check, or a currency note, or an export bill, or import bill, which is payable in any other country outside India. So this is the definition. As per FEMA, section two of FEMA, a foreign exchange means any fixed deposit, or a credit, or a draft, or a check, etc., which is payable in any foreign currency, payable in payable outside India. Okay. 
um, now I'll move on to the next one. Who are all the participants in the foreign exchange market? See, the participants in the foreign exchange market are first one is the central bank of that country. For example, in India, it is Reserve Bank of India. In US, it is Federal Reserve. Like that, every nation has got that country's bank. And that bank is called the central bank of the nation. So the central bank is the major player in the foreign exchange market. Next, all commercial banks. So commercial banks does what? They do merchant transactions and trade transactions. What is the difference between merchant transaction and trade transaction? Merchant transaction is one which a bank does on behalf of a customer. Since your customers will be requiring foreign exchange, some of your customers may be having foreign exchange with them. So they will come with the foreign exchange and request for conversion to Indian rupee. So that is a merchant. For example, an exporter, he is exporting goods to US. So he'll be making, he'll be getting the payment in US dollar. So he will come to you with the US dollar, you give me Indian rupee. So you are converting the dollar into Indian rupee on behalf of a customer. So that is a merchant transaction. Similarly, there will be an importer who will be importing machinery or goods from other nations, from China or Japan or some other nations. So they will be requiring because what all merchandise they import, they have to make the payment in their currency. If they're importing from a European country, they, the payment has to be made in euro. So therefore the conversion has to take place there. So the customer will come to you, see I need so much GBP or Japanese and or USD or Euro. You collect, you debit my account and pay me this foreign currency. So those transactions we classify under merchant transaction. And apart from the merchant transactions, the bank does trade transaction also. What is the difference between merchant and trade? Trade means a bank does a transaction not on behalf of a customer, but they does it on their own. For what purpose? We are doing trading. That means trading means we buy foreign currency at a lower rate and sell at a higher rate. So we get, a, a bank, we means the bank gets a profit out of it. They buy at a lower rate, sell at a higher rate. If the margin may be five paise, 10 paise, but the volume will be huge. Therefore, the, the, this is, these are all the transactions done by commercial bank, merchant transaction and trade transaction. Then investment banks. There are certain banks which communicate, which help the persons or people or entities which does investment either in India or abroad. So they are also participating in this foreign exchange market. Then big corporates, big companies, for example, Reliance Industries, Tata Motors, uh, et cetera. So these are all the big corporates which also play an important role in foreign exchange market. Then individuals, high net worth individuals, NRI, they does it for their investment, for trade and travel. Then Forex brokers. Of course, Forex brokers is also playing an active role in the foreign exchange market. Why? Because, because the, the participants uh, or the people who are dealing in foreign exchange market, one person will be sitting in India and the other person be located anywhere in the globe. He can be in Egypt, he can be in Japan, he can be in any other uh, nation, say so that is located in any other continent. So to connect these two people, sometimes a, a broker is needed. So foreign exchange brokers are also acting an important role in the foreign exchange market. So these are all the major participants in forex market. Move on to the next one. What are the characteristics or features of foreign exchange? Why? Because I uh, give stress on this. The reason is there can be a question, which of the following is not a feature of foreign exchange market? So you should know what are all the features or characteristics of foreign It is a 24 hour market. That means this market functions around the globe. So this 24 hour market doesn't meet the, all the working days. See, uh, normally from Monday to Friday, it is some of your background mic is not mute, please mute it. So 24 hour market means yeah, this uh, function throughout. Why? Because see, now the people, the participants in the market are located anywhere in the globe. As you know, the time zone in different, uh, different countries comes under different time zone. Now here it is say 7.30. But whereas in, in the case of US, it will be 8.30 in the 
night because there is a difference of 11 hours. So um, some part of the globe will be actively participating in the market throughout. That's why we call it a 24 hour market. However, Saturdays and Sundays are treated as holidays with limited transactions. Some countries, mostly the Muslim dominated nations and all, they function, uh, they function on Saturday and Sunday and Friday will be a holiday for them. So they will be doing limited transaction, but for Forex market or Forex transaction, uh, we, you can take it Monday to Friday is full fledged transaction. So any uh, and the subsequent, you will come to know that so, so there are, there will be some points where uh, how do you calculate the number of days and all. So Saturday and Sunday you can take it as holiday for international market, international business. Okay. Next, this is an OTC market. Means this is an over the counter market. Means there is no specified location. So in the case of a grocery market or a vegetable market or a fruit market, if you want to buy some fruits, you want to buy some orange or apple, how do you get? Now this online facility is there, but mostly it will go to the a particular location, the space, the, the a location which is nearer to your residence, you go there, buy it. So there is a timing and it will be, there will be a specific location between situated between four walls. But this, this is an OTC market means there is no specific location. If you have a system, a computer or a laptop or a mobile with an uh, internet facility, you can do the transaction. You can communicate with any person in the globe. So this is an OTC market means it's over the counter market. It's a global market with no barriers. It's a global market. Now the entire globe is, is uh, uh, formed into a single entity or you can say the entire globe has own location. So it's a global market with no, but there is no barrier. Can communicate with any person and with a person in Uganda, a person in Iraq, you can have the transaction. It's a highly liquid market. What is meant by liquidity? What all Forex reserve you are holding? In no time, you can end cash it. That is liquidity. With no difficulty, you can convert that asset into Indian rupee. That is highly liquid market. Huge capital and trade flows. So the, the volume transacting in the market is very huge. You cannot imagine in a particular day, $5,200 billion or $5.21 um, trillion transactions are taking place in a day. So you can imagine how much volume it is there. Uh, and a huge capital. So trade as well as capital. What is the difference between trade and capital? Capital means the money is meant for investment. Trade means trade related. Trade related means um, import or export, buying or selling. Then high fluctuations in the exchange market. The market, the rates are highly fluctuating. It means that, see, the rates every second, the statistic says every four seconds, the rate changes. That means the rate will be scrolling in the screen, Reuters or Bloomberg screen. And if you look at the rate, particularly, say, for example, the highly fluctuating currencies are dollar, Japanese, and Euro, and GBP. And other currencies are also fluctuating, but these are all the four major currencies which constitute more than 60% of the volume and taking place in the uh, globe. Therefore, see, if you look at the rate of a dollar in the screen, in the TV screen, say, suppose it is 7 to 10, you take a pen and the write 7 to 10. By the time you look again, the rate might have changed. That's what every four seconds, the rate changes, highly fluctuating. It may come down or it may go up, depending upon many factors. Then settlement affected by time zone factor. I told you, if you are transacting with a person in UK, there is a time gap of almost five hours. Therefore, uh, now here it is uh, seven o'clock. There it is uh, early morning. Five hours back means two, two o'clock by that time, early morning. Therefore, uh, this is affected by time zone factor. That means a, a transaction cannot be completed simultaneously as we did in the case of a domestic transaction. Say a domestic transaction, suppose you want to buy, say, a watch or a mobile phone. What do you do? You go to the shop, you select the item, pay the money, get the commodity. But here, it's not like that. You, that means there, the giving and taking. You are paying the money, you are getting the commodity. It is happening, taking place simultaneously. The, that's the case with the domestic trade. Whereas in the case of foreign exchange, this is not possible most of the time. That means, suppose you are doing a transaction with a person in US. So now in US, it is night. So they cannot 
communicate they cannot go to the bank and they can give instruction or they cannot make the remittance therefore the settlement will take place next day by the time here it would be night so this is the reason this is the settlement is affected by time zone factor means simultaneously a foreign exchange transaction cannot be completed most of the time then market affected by governmental policies and controls. If you are uh, doing a transaction with a person in Hong Kong, what are the laws uh, and rules applicable in Hong Kong will apply to that particular agreement or plan contract. Therefore, this is affected by governmental policies and control. So a person in India, suppose you want to have a transaction with a person in Sri Lanka or in Myanmar or in some other country, the person should be should know the regulations, the rules and bylaws applicable to that nation. So therefore, these are all the major characteristics of foreign exchange market. Now we'll move on to what are the factors which affect the foreign exchange rate. So uh, now coming to exchange rate, what is exchange rate? Exchange rate is the rate at which a particular currency can be converted to another currency. For example, the exchange rate of US dollar in terms of Indian rupee is one US dollar is equal to 72 rupees. That means one dollar will be equal to 72 rupees. That means that is the exchange, the, the rate at which a currency is converted to another currency. Or you can say that one dollar is equal to say 0.75 GBP, like that. Or one GBP is equal to 1.2 USD, like that. So it is the equivalent of one currency in terms of another currency. Now, this exchange rate of a particular currency depends on three factors. Major, major, broadly, you can classify into three. Number one, the fundamental reasons. Number two, the technical reasons. And number three, the speculative factors. Now coming to fundamental reasons, there are some six, again, subcategories. The first uh, factor which affects the exchange rate is balance of payment. You should know what is balance of payment. Balance of payment, see, from the word itself, it is there. It is the balance. Means, you see, every nation will have inflow of foreign exchange and outflow of foreign exchange. Inflow of foreign exchange means foreign exchange means the currency of other nations coming to India. Dollar is coming to India, GBP, somebody is bringing GBP to India, Japanese sent to India, uh, and like the Euro to India. So these are all the ways. How do we get uh, uh, foreign currency? We get foreign, foreign currency in different sources. See, number one, because of export. A person, a merchant in India, if he does export, means he is sending, he is selling goods to other nations. If he is selling goods to Singapore, the currency in which the money is received is Singapore dollar. If he is exporting to Japan, then the money pay received will be in Japanese. So like that, for all export, the, there is an inflow of foreign exchange into India. Similarly, the opposite transaction is young import. In import, what happens? Goods comes to India. Some, suppose you want to, you, or your customer would like to import a car from Germany. So a car will be imported and the payment has to be made in Euro. So there the foreign exchange will go out of the country. So export, foreign exchange comes to India. Import, foreign exchange goes out of India. So this is one method. And this here, the, the difference between the export trade and import trade, you can say balance of trade. So balance of trade, not only this difference between export and import, all miscellaneous remittance also comes under that. So what are the miscellaneous remittance? See, some of your relative may be working in Japan or UK or in Middle East. So they will be getting the salary in that currency, that country, country's currency. So they will be bringing foreign exchange. So NRA remittance to India. See, non-resident Indians, Indians which are working other countries either working or doing business or making investment whatever it may be they get foreign exchange they and they bring this to india so that is one form of miscellaneous remittance number two students are coming to india for education purpose some underdeveloped nations like say nigeria uh, african countries and even from us developed nations are also students are coming to india to have a course in here to have an education here so they will bring foreign exchange then tourists are coming to india to visit our country therefore foreign exchange comes to india similarly people are coming for a treatment medical facility foreign exchange comes to india then these are all these are all the miscellaneous remittance 
then so balance of payment means the difference between the difference between export trade and import trade so that is balance of trade and balance of payment means in addition to the difference between import and export trade miscellaneous remittance as well as investment will come see people will invest in india because they suppose the rate of return in other nation their country for example maldives or japan they, they, the return is less they may bring money to india and invest here get a higher return so the investment inflow is there fdi uh, foreign direct investment and uh, overseas direct these are all the type of investment so foreign exchange will come to india for investment for miscellaneous remittances similarly for all the reverse transaction foreign exchange goes out of india also somebody in india would like to have an investment in japan the foreign exchange will go indian rupee will be converted to japan japanese and, and the foreign exchange will go so investment outside india overseas direct investment or fdi foreign direct investment so this foreign exchange is going out of the country then tourist indians are visiting other nations europe america and other countries so foreign exchange goes out treatment people are going out again a uh, foreign exchange goes out of india then um, education people are studying in us us uk and other nations, china and other countries foreign exchange goes so these are all the ways of inflow and outflow so the entire difference between inflow and outflow is balance of payment the difference between import trade and export trade is balance of trade make it clear so the balance of payment of a nation how does it affect the exchange rate if the balance of payment is positive or the balance of payment is um, say favorable or it is comfort level then that particular nation's currency will be stronger for example in a particular year uh, india or in a particular month the balance of payment of india is a 1 billion usd that means the difference between inflow and outflow is 1 million that means it suppose the import is 10 million out um, export is 11 million so the difference is 1 million that means the balance of payment is favorable we have adequate forex reserve therefore the currency will be stronger suppose we, our import is more or the payment which we have to make in foreign currency is more mm -hmm. and what we have in reserve is less then we will be in a weak position because we have to cover up the difference by buying the foreign exchange from the open market though the value of the indian rupee may depreciate considerably same case suppose you have 50000 with, with you in a particular month your income and your expenditure in particular month is a 60000 you have to borrow 10000 from the outside so if you go for borrowing suppose the normal rate is 8% or 10% and if you are urgently in it suppose if somebody is uh, hospitalized or you met with some other uh, some eventuality then you may require the money the, the person who is lending you will demand a higher rate even 15 or 20% and because of your urgency you may buy it by agreeing this higher rate of interest similarly when if the balance of payment is adverse that means it is negative then the, that country's currency may be weak because they have to buy the currency at a higher rate from the market then economic growth rate again this economic growth rate is also affecting the foreign exchange rate see uh, for uh, having a higher economic growth we require lot of imports so if, when we require lot of imports our currency becomes weaker and uh, subsequently when we uh, we have made a lot of imports and our growth has stabilized that means we are well well um, equipped and no more further import is required by the time then our currency may become stronger so initially in a growing economy the econo uh, economic growth is higher the currency will be dearer or see the currency will be weaker then fiscal policies fiscal policies means the policies which is uh, means the the say budgetary announcement there the tax will be discussed so fiscal policy see suppose the tax income tax or corporate tax they cut from 30 to 25% then lot of people will invest because here instead of paying 30% the government charges only 25 or 20% so out of their total profit they need to pay a lesser tax so lot of investment will come to india when lot of investment will come to india our currency become stronger because 
there is a demand for our currency. So our currency becomes stronger. Then monetary policy. Monetary policy is one which RB announces periodically. Uh, for example, you must be knowing the quarterly monetary policy. The monetary policy also affects the foreign exchange rate. Suppose uh, uh, our, our, uh, our, our Indian rupee is weakening, means uh, the dollar is going up, then uh, RB will come at the rescue and they will uh, make some changes in the monetary policy to stabilize the right uh, price of Indian rupee. So this is monetary policy. Then Indian interest rates. Interest rate is also affecting the exchange rate. How, how does it affect if the interest rate is more in India? See, for example, a person in, in US is looking at what is the interest rate given in India. Suppose for an average deposit of one year, the bank in India pays, say, 5%. And for an average deposit in US, he gets only 3%. So people will, in, instead of investing in US, they will bring their money, dollars to India to get a higher rate of interest. So a lot of inflow for an exchange, dollar will come to India. When dollar comes to India, there is a demand for Indian rupee because they are all bringing dollar and they, they want to convert Indian rupee. So there is a demand for Indian rupee. So our, um, our currency become stronger. Then political issues. How does political issue affect? Political issues means, suppose the government of a particular nation is not stable or there is, um, for example, frequent war, terrorism, example, say Iraq or Libya. So these are all the nations where there is no, there is a, a firm government is not there. Because of that, the currency become weaker. So wherever there is a firm government, a major, absolute majority government, they can have uh, strategic decisions, policies they can have. Therefore, the currency becomes stronger. So this political issue is also forming or playing a major role in deciding the exchange rate. So a, a, a unstable political um, uh, nation or there is, uh, there is no government, there the currency becomes weaker. Now, technical reasons, government controls leading to violent movement in exchange rate. So uh, again, suppose there is a violent exchange, movement in exchange, dollar, uh, 70 rupees, next day, 71 rupees, then 72, 73, like that. If it goes like that, we call it, it's a violent movement. Then RBA or the government will come and they will pump in dollar or whatever be the currencies to stabilize the rate. So to control the government, uh, to control the violent movement, this is we call technical reasons. Sometimes the government will impose certain restrictions to regulate or restrict the movement, violent movement of the currency. Then the third is speculative factors. Speculative factors means the transaction which are done not for genuine uh, miscellaneous remittance or uh, trade related transactions, that means import trade or, or export trade, they does it for their own. See, speculative purpose. They, they purchase a, a particular currency in bulk and hold it for some time, uh, thinking that the rate of the currency may move up subsequently. And then when the moves up, they sell it. So this is called speculative transaction. See, neither for investment nor for trade-related transaction, but they just for deriving the profit out of the from the value in the exchange, they buy it in bulk and subsequently they hold it for some time and then they sell it. So this is, these are all called the speculative factors. So these are all the major factors which affect foreign exchange uh, rate. Now moving, moving on to different types of foreign exchange contracts. See the foreign exchange contracts can be classified into four category. One is cash or ready or you can say TOD, today, TOD, TOD. Next is TOM, third is, third is SPORT, and fourth is FORWARD. Now look at, suppose a transaction has started or the a date of contract is 11, 12, means yesterday. Yesterday means Friday. So it's Friday, a transaction has been commenced or there's some a person in India and with a person in UK, they entered into a contract of say buying and selling of UK. So uh, US uh, GBP. So Indian person wanted GBP and uh, the, the person in UK wanted convert equivalent to Indian rupee. Maybe that may be the transaction. So if uh, 11, 12 is the date of contract, they entered into an agreement 
and they made the giving and taking both the uk citizen got indian rupee and indian citizen got gbp or the other way whatever it may be indian citizen got indian rupee and the uk citizen got gbp whatever it may be so the transaction is completed on the same day of contract we call it a cash or ready transaction so date of contract or date of commencement of the transaction and the date of settlement takes place on the same day we call it a cash or ready transaction this date of settlement is also called value date when the transaction is completed that date we call the value date now what is term 11 12 is the date of contract means the transaction originated or commenced on 11 12 and it is completed on 14 12 why it is term term means next working day it's next working day so 11 12 is friday 30 12 is saturday and 13 is sunday so these days are treated as holidays in the beginning i told you so saturday and sunday are not taken into account so the next working day in the case of 11 12 is 14 12 so in this case term is 14 12 next working day in both the country and suppose if the transaction is with us and it in case 14th of december is a public holiday in us then it moves to 15th of december got it so that is next working day in both the countries and what is term date of transaction 11 12 and completion on the second working day in both the countries so same day cash already next working day term second working day spot any day the transaction is completed any day beyond second working day is forward so forward means beyond 15 12 that means if it is 16 12 we say it is a forward transaction 17 18 19 etc so the forward period then there comes the forward period the forward period can be in months or in days the 11 12 a transaction is come come contract is signed it is on month forward so on month forward means it is the value is 11th of january so on month that is called a forward rate so these are all the there can be a question on this also next for next change we will move on to exchange rate so exchange rate this is an area where the students get confused because uh, the questions will be asked in such a way they will give you a particular transaction and you will be asked to quote the rate so here the confusion is you some of the participants some of the students get confused whether we have to apply the buying rate or selling rate okay so i'll make it very clear you listen carefully see foreign exchange rate means there are the, it is a two way quotation two way quotation means the every institution bank or some other agency which is quoting the foreign exchange rate they have to quote two rates on the buying rate which is also called the bid rate and the second the selling rate which is also known as offer rate or ask rate make it very clear buying rate and selling rate buying is also known as bid rate because exam they will be giving bid rate then you should not get confused what is bid rate buying rate and offer rate or ask rate is also known as selling rate now how do you differentiate a buying transaction with a selling transaction listen carefully suppose you want to buy a, a mobile phone so you want to buy a mobile phone you go to a shop and you choose the item you bargain for the price suppose the shop owner says give me 10000 i will give you this phone so you pay 10000 and got this mobile phone so what is this transaction for you you got a commodity and you have given indian rupee so for this transaction for you is a buying transaction so in a buying transaction you are getting a commodity and you are giving indian rupee the same concept will apply in forex also so in forex henceforth whenever i say a foreign exchange say dollar or japanese yen or chinese yuan or any other singapore dollar or canadian dollar you have to consider it as not a currency it is a commodity so henceforth as an indian indian rupee is rupee or money and all other foreign currencies are treated as a commodity okay 
Now, see, a customer is bringing USD. He is a traveler, a tourist is coming to you with a currency note of USD 100. He is, you are sitting at the counter. He is bringing this 100 USD currency note. Give me Indian rupee. So what is the transaction for you? You means you are a banker. What you are doing? You are getting USD and in turn, you are giving Indian rupee to the tourist. So what is the transaction for you? You are like getting a commodity, giving Indian rupee. So it is a buying transaction. Same thing will apply. So whenever a bank receives foreign exchange and gives Indian rupee, it is a buying transaction. Right? So here I have given the rate at which bank buys foreign exchange from the customer or customer sells foreign exchange to the bank. Same thing. See, you have purchased a phone from your merchant. So what is the transaction for the merchant? It's a selling transaction because he is giving away commodity and he is getting Indian rupee. Same thing. So when an exporter is bringing foreign exchange to you, for exporter, he is selling foreign exchange to you. And for the banker, you are buying foreign exchange. So in a buying transaction, bank receives foreign exchange and gives Indian rupee. Or there is a credit in customer's account because when a customer brings you dollar, you give me Indian rupee and credit to my account. So there will be a credit in the customer's account. That is, these are all the features of a buying transaction. Selling the other way, the rate at which bank sells foreign exchange, customer um, exchange to the customer, customer buys foreign exchange from the bank, uh, customer gives foreign exchange and gets Indian rupee or there is a debit. Customer comes to you, I want 1000 USD. How do, you, how do you give 1000 USD? You debit his account with the equivalent Indian rupee and pay him 1000 USD by draft or uh, remittance, whatever it may be. So I'll move on to exchange rate quotation. So there are two uh, different ways of quoting the exchange rate. One is the direct rate, another is the indirect rate. So in direct quotation, foreign currency is fixed and Indian rupee is variable. So one USD is equal to so much Indian rupee. This is a direct quotation. One Euro is equal to 80 Indian rupee. That is a direct quotation. Whereas indirect quotation means one Indian rupee is equal to 0 0.014 USD. That is an indirect quotation. Or one Indian rupee is equal to so much Euro. That is an indirect quotation. So in direct quotation, what happens, foreign currency is fixed or foreign currency is constant and domestic currency is variable. As far as India is concerned, the uh, Indian rupee is the domestic currency and we follow the direct quotation. I have given an example in shaded in yellow. See, Apple INR 2025. This is an example of a direct quotation. Apple INR means one apple is equal to the first rate is the buying rate, second rate is the selling rate. So one apple is equal to 20 rupees means the customer, the merchant buys one apple at 20 rupees and he will sell one apple at 25 rupees. So suppose there is a, a farmer, agriculturist who is producing apple. He brings the apple to this merchant. They will pay for per apple 20 rupees. And suppose you want to buy an apple from the merchant, he will charge one apple 25. This is an example of a direct quotation. So direct quotation means directly the value is quoted. Somebody comes to you, or comes to the merchant. What is the rate of an apple? If you want to buy, pay me 25 rupees. If you want to sell, I will give you per apple 20. It's a direct quotation. Whereas look at the second uh, second slide, second side, the second, second column. It is INR Apple 54. This means for 100 rupees, I will buy five apple, and for 100 rupees, the merchant will sell four apple. So both the quotation are one and the same thing, but in a different fashion. So here, suppose you, you want to buy, you go to this merchant, the fruit vendor will tell, see, four apple, 100 rupees. See, the concept is same, then you have to calculate four apple, 100 rupees means what is the value of one apple, 100 by four, 25. So the quotation in direct and indirect more or less one and the same thing, but they have quoted in different fashion. So this is the concept. Therefore, in direct quotation, what is the maxing or principle? Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high because they buy at 20 and sell at 25. 
Whereas in the case of indirect quotation, the principle is buy high, sell low. Because 100 rupees and apple is 5, 4. Means they buy 5 apple and sell 4. That is the buy high, sell low, the concept. And then a direct quotation is also known as home currency quotation or price quotation. And indirect quotation is known as foreign currency quotation. Then the relation is direct rate is equal to 1 by indirect rate or indirect rate is equal to 1 by direct rate. Means euro, 1 euro is equal to 80 INR means 1 INR is equal to 1 by 80 euro. Same thing. Now, India and most of other countries, except if you follow the direct quotation. So uh, what are the countries' currencies which quote indirect quotation? UK, European nations, Australia, and New Zealand. They are all the countries which quote the rate in indirect way. So this is the different types of quotation. Now I'll explain that uh, method that uh, quoting the rates a little more clear. See, the exchange rate will be normally expressed USD INR 72.50 slash 60. This indicates first rate is the buying rate and second rate is the selling rate. The first rate means 72.50 and the second rate is 72.60. So the 72.50 is the buying rate, 72.60 is the selling rate. Look at the second one, Euro INR 78.5025 slash 50. So the first rate is 78.5025, which is the buying rate. And second rate is 78.5050. So the second decimal, the, the 50, is re replacing which one? The 25. So 78.5025 is the buying rate. And 78.5050 is the selling rate. As per FEDA guidelines, the rate has to be quoted in four decimals. Now, as see, uh, next is... Uh, so again, you can expand it. So this USD INR 725060 means one buying on USD at 7250 and selling on USD at 7260. I think it is clear. So buying on USD at 7250 and selling at 7260. Similarly, if it is Euro INR, this is the uh, uh, rate. Now. Uh, MCQ, I'll leave it. I will, I will send you later on. I'll move on to the next slide. One second. Let me, let me, one second. Yes, we'll move on to forward rates. What is forward rates? So forward rate is a future rate. Frequently questions will be asked on uh, area is the direct quotation, direct quotation, there can be a question. Then forward rate also usually they ask a question. So what is forward rate? This is a future rate. Means beyond the spot, beyond second. Suppose the settlement or the completion is taking place beyond uh, second working day, we call it a forward rate. So forward rate means it is the future value of a currency. And the future value depends on three factors. Number one, spot rate. Number two, the forward period. And third, the interest rate differential of the two currencies. So that means suppose uh, the customer is requesting for a forward rate means a future rate. The dealer means as a banker, you have to look and do three things. Number one, what is the rolling rate of that day? At that time, what is the spot rate of this particular currency? And next, what is the forward period? The forward period can be in days or in months. The customer is requesting, I want three months forward. That means he is putting through the transaction after three months. Then you have to calculate the three month forward rate means what is the rate at which you can buy or sell after three months. So that is known as the forward period. The forward period can be in days or months, 10 days forward, 15 days forward, one month forward, two months forward and so on. And the third factor which affect the forward rate is interest rate differential of the two countries. What is meant by interest rate differential? Suppose a customer is requesting you I want the rate for Singapore dollar, then uh, and see one month forward. So what is the one month interest rate in India? Say 4.5%. And what is the one month average 
interest rate in Singapore, say 2%. So what is the interest rate differential? 4.5 and 2. That is 2.5. This is called the interest rate differential. Suppose you are uh, you want you want to quote the rate for USD or Japanese yen, then you have to compare the rate for the corresponding period between India and Japan. If it is USD, India and US, that is not that is known as the four interest rate differential of the two currencies. So these are all the three factors which depend on the forward rate. Now the forward rate a, a currency is fully convertible then the forward rate depends on demand and supply also. Apart from these three factors, the currency is not fully convertible. It also uh, depends on demand and supply. What is convertibility? Most of you must be knowing. What is convertibility? Convertibility means there is no restriction. All developed nations, for example, UK, US, Japan and all, they are all developed nations. There is no restriction. There is free movement of currencies permitted, inflow and outflow. So those currencies we call fully convertible or freely convertible. Means there is the government doesn't impose any restriction. Whereas in the case of India, our, our nation is not a developed nation. Ours is a developing nation. And here the Indian rupee is not fully convertible. There are certain restrictions and the restrictions are on capital account. Current account is freely convertible. Capital account, there are restrictions. Therefore, Indian rupee is partially convertible or you can say, or not fully convertible. Current account is fully convertible. Capital account is partially convertible. Then people may study, you will have a doubt. What is a current account and what is a, you might have learned in other uh, topic also. Current account transaction, capital account. Current account means all trade related transactions and miscellaneous remittance comes under current account transaction. Capital account transaction means if there is, because of putting through that particular transaction, if there is a change, in the asset and liability of a person residing in India, outside India, or a person residing outside India, in India. For example, a person in India, he is doing, he is taking a loan in within India. So there is a change in his liability. Is it a capital account transaction? No, because a person is a resident in India. He has taken a loan within India, so there is no change in the liability outside India. So it is not a capital account transaction. Suppose this person avails a loan from Japan for some purpose, maybe a commercial loan, some loan he has taken either for business or some other purpose. So he, the person is residing in India, his liability outside India increases. So it is a capital account. Yeah, suppose a person in India, he is investing some money in US, so his asset outside India is increased. So that is a capital account. Similarly, a person residing outside India, he is making investment in India, it is a capital account. Or a person outside India is borrowing from India, adding liability, again, it is a capital account. So this is current account and capital. Account. All other transactions comes under uh, current account transaction. Now forward rate, we'll move on to forward rate. The forward rate is nothing but the future rate. And this future rate can be more than the spot rate or less than the spot rate. If the future rate is more than the spot rate, we call the currency is at a premium. And if the future rate is less than the spot rate, we call the currency at a discount. Now, that means if the currency is at a premium, future value is costly. Look at an example, spot USD INR 70 to 50, 60. This means what? The bank will buy on USD at Indian rupees 70 to 50. And bank will sell on USD at 70 to 60. Please mute the participant, please mute. And uh, one month forward, the premium is given as 5, 10 by 6. So one month forward premium is 5, 10 paise means the first is the buying premium and second is the selling premium. Means five is the buying premium, 10 paise is the selling premium. So what is the one month forward rate? To get one month forward rate, you take the spot rate, that means 70 to 50, with the spot rate add the five paise. Means 70 to 55 is the one month forward buying rate. 
to get the selling rate, you take the spot selling rate, 70 to 60, add 10 paise, you'll get 70 to 70. So one month forward rate is 70 to 55 slash 70. This is the way in which you arrive at a forward rate. So first you have to look at uh, whether the currency is at a premium or at a discount. If it is at a premium, add the premium. If it is at a discount, you subtract the discount. Same thing. And next uh, column, I have given discount. Future rate is lesser. Example, sport GBP INR 8, 9, 10, 20. One month forward discount 10, 5, say, 10, 5. Therefore, one month forward rate is sport buying 8, 9, 10. And you subtract the forward buying points, that is 10, 5, say, you will get 8, 9. And to get the forward selling rate, get, uh, take the spot selling rate, that is 8, 9, 20. And subtract 5, 5, say, you will get 8, 9, 50. Now, another point to remember is sometimes in the question, they will not mention whether the currency is at a premium or at a discount. Listen very carefully. They will not say, they will just say forward points. Here I have given forward premium or forward discount. Then the word premium indicates you have to add or currency is costly on a future date. And the discount means it is cheaper or you have to subtract. Sometimes it will be forward points only. Then how do you differentiate whether it is at a premium or at a discount? If the forward points are in ascending order, means you look at here, forward premium, 5, 10. One second, one second. So if the forward points is in the ascending order, means 5 paise, 10 paise. Means first is 5 and the second number is higher than 5. So you can say that the currency is at a premium. And look at the second one. It is 10, 5. Uh, the points are in a descending order. Then you can say that it is at a discount. Move on to, to have a clarity on forward points. I have given one more example. Given spot USD INR, 70 to 40, 50. Forward points given. Look at it is forward points, not premium or discount. One month forward, 10, 20 paise. Two month forward, 25, 35 paise. And three month forward, 40, 30 paise. Now you have to find one month forward buying rate, one month forward selling rate, two month forward buying rate, selling rate, and three month forward buying rate and selling rate. So to get one month forward buying rate, you take sport buying. What is sport buying? 70 to 40. Now one month, what is the buying points? 10 paise. Now look at 10, 20. One month forward is 10, 20. That means it is in an ascending order. That means the currency is at a premium. And the first 10 paise is the buying premium. And second 20 paise is the selling premium. So you add this 10 paise with 70 to 40, you will get 70 to 50 as one month forward buying rate. To get one month forward selling rate, the next column, take sport selling rate. Sport selling is 72.50. And one month forward selling point is 20 paise. Add it, you will get 70 to 70. Look at two month forward rate. To get two month forward rate, again, you take the sport buy. So sport buying is 72.40. And two month forward is 25 paise. Add it, 70 to 65. To get the two month forward selling rate, sport selling is 70 to 50. Add the forward selling points for two months, that is 35 paise, you'll get 70 to 85. And now look at three month. Here, three month, the forward points is given us 40 paise, 30 paise. So 40, 30 means it is in descending order. The first two were in ascending order. So the currency is at a premium. Here, the currency is at a discount. So you have to subtract. So take spot rate, 70 to 40, buying rate. Three month forward points, 40 paise, you subtract. You will get three month forward rate of 72. And selling, 70 to 50 minus 30, 70 to 20. I think it is clear. It's a very simple thing. What well, to get the forward rate? First, you decide, look at whether the currency is at a premium or at a discount. If the currency is at a premium, you add the forward points or forward premium. 
And if the currency is at a discount, you subtract the forward discount or forward points. Again, to get buying rate, you take spot buying and add or subtract. To get selling rate, take spot selling rate and add or subtract. Move on to the next one. This is cross rate mechanism. Little bit difficult to understand. Again, how do, when does we do this cross rate mechanism? See, cross rate mechanism applies or we make use of this cross rate mechanism when the rate of a particular currency is not available and you have to reach at that rate through a via medium. Now, come to look at the situation one. USD INR, 72.50.60. You know, expansion means the bank buys USD at 72.50 and bank sells USD at Indian rupees 70 to 60. And the second rate is GBP USD, 1.2025. That means what? On GBP, bank buys at USD 1.20, and on GBP, bank sells at 1.25 USD. So here, dollar in terms of Indian rupees given, GBP in terms of dollar is also given. But GBP in terms of INR is not given. This is a situation. So suppose you got an instrument that is expressed in Great Britain pound and the rates available to you are these one and two. How do you reach at this particular rate? Here we make use of the cross rate mechanism. So cross rate mechanism, in order to use cross rate mechanism, you should have two rates and of the two, there will be a common currency. Here, what is the common currency? Means the common currency in the first and second equation. First equation, USD INR. Second equation, GBP USD. So the common currency is USD. And this USD is in the opposite side. First equation, first or numerator. Second equation, denominator or second. So we call the common currency in the opposite side. So the cross rate mechanism says, if the common currency is in the opposite side, the rule is multiplication. The thumb rule is multiplication. That means to get the buying rate, you multiply the two buying rates. The two buying rates means buying rates of the two equations. What is the buying rate of first equation? 7250 and buying rate of second equation 1.2. So to get the GBP buying rate, multiply 72.50 into 1.20. To get the selling rate, multiply the two selling rate. What is the selling rate in the first equation? 72.60 and selling rate in the second equation, 1.25. Multiply these two. So you got the answer as 87.00 slash 90.75. This means on GBP can be purchased at 87 rupees and the bank will sell on GBP at 90.75. This is cross rate mechanism, case one or situation one.